Hello guys, my name is Hugo Araujo and today I'm going to talk about trauma in pregnancy. Well, the most challenging things in trauma in pregnancy is because there, there are major physiological changes in the pregnant woman that I'm going to discuss a little bit later. So the parameters that you have about anatomical relations or physiological results that you expect in, in non-pregnant women are a little bit different. Another important thing to take notice is that in, in a pregnant woman involving a trauma, you are treating two patients. You're treating the mother and you're treating the fetus. So we need to be worried about both of them. So if you have a uh, pregnant woman in a severe trauma, you need to refer the patient or call a qualified surgeon and an obstetrician for early consultation to take care of this mother. So I mentioned, I have, I had mentioned that there are a few anatomical and physiological changes in in the mother, so I I brought a few to discuss with you. And the first one is uterus size. So the uterus gets larger throughout the pregnancy, but an important parameter that you need to know is that by the twentieth week, the uterus must have reached the umbilicus. This parameter is important to estimate the age of the pregnancy of the, the women. This is important to the assessment and treatment of the patient that we are going to discuss later. Another physiological thing is that the intestines of the mother are pushed cephalid because the uterus is growing right here. So the intestines get pushed cephalid. So they are usually more protected in blunt trauma because they are protecting with the uterus. But that makes the uterus more vulnerable than the intestines in blunt trauma. Uh, placenta is vulnerable to share forces because it is relaxed. Uh, the, it, there is not much elastic tissue in the placenta, so it is very vulnerable to shear forces. Another important detail is that plasma volume increased throughout the pregnancy. This is important when the patient has suffered a trauma because they usually take about. 1.5 liters of losing blood that they will show any symptoms of hypovolemia because they have uh, a plasma volume increase throughout the pregnancy. So to be affected by hypovolemia, it takes a little bit more losing blood. It takes more hemorrhage to show symptoms. Another important thing is that physiological anemia that happens in pregnancy. So the more common mechanisms of injury in pregnant women are listed here. The most common one is MOT. It's a vehicle collision, which represents 49%. Falls represent 25%. Assault represents 18% and gunshot wounds represent 4% and burns represent 1%. So the mechanisms of trauma that I have mentioned, they usually are represented by blunt trauma. Blunt trauma represents 91% of trauma in pregnancy. You, you you can diagnose blunt trauma by looking at external contusions and abrasion, for example, at the abdomen. 
So the Adam of uh, pregnant women is important to inspect the if there is any contusion or if there is any abrasion. Another important thing is that the prevention of accidents evidence have sh have showed that lap lap belt associated with shoulder restraints bring more security to the mother and the fetus than the lap belt alone so it's important to take care of prevention measures to accidents by using lap belt associated with shoulder strength so once you have diagnosed the patient you have you have taken a good assessment so you're gonna Ask yourself, who am I going to treat first, the fetus or the mother? Well, the answer is the mother, because if the mother is okay, the fetus is, prob is more likely to be okay. So first, you need to be worried about the woman's health and then about the fetus health. But you usually can can take care of both at the same time. So the primary survey of the mother, well, first they're similar to any other non-pregnant patient in trauma, because you're gonna need to ensure a airway you need to ensure adequate ventilation, oxygenation, and effective circulatory volume. So we are going to take care of the airway to the breathing and to the circulation. So another important thing is that uterine compression of the vena cava may reduce venous return. So you have two options to avoid this kind of complication. You can manually displace the uterus to the left side, or you can use inclination of the patient. So in this case here, you can see an inclination of the patient by 30 degrees. So in this case, you can see the uterus get lateralized to the left. But another option is to, with your hands, can push the uterus to the left side. So another important thing is, because the increased intravascular volume, the pregnant could not show sign of hypovolemia. However, merely to placenta hypoxia. So uh, as you can see here, uh, you need to to care and provide an effective circulatory volume because as I told you, the pregnant woman may not show symptoms of hypovolemia, but the fetus can be suffering from hypovolemia because the mother is losing blood, okay? Well, after you have taken care of the mother, you need to do the primary survey of the fetus. A uh, few things that you need to worry about are abrupt, uh, abruption of placenta. In this case, you're gonna see loose, usually loss of blood, abdominal tenderness. So you need to be aware of. Another condition is uterine rupture, which could also lead to Blood, bloody, blood, bleeding, and and uh, another thing that you can see that is by palpating the the abdomen, you could actually feel parts of the fetus because their uterus is ruptured. And it's so it's important to perform continuous feature monitoring with some con dyna dynamometer. If the, the gestation is older than 20 to 24 weeks, 
So as I told you, it is important to, to estimate this by looking at the user size. In this case, you're going to see uh, users reaching the umbilicus. If the, if the gestation is younger than this, you can only use the fetal heartbeats. They are, they are the more important parameter for fetus younger than 20 to 24 weeks. Well, the second, secondary survey is basically the same for non-pregnant patients, but the differential thing that you need to be more careful about is the perineal examination and the vaginal examination. So you're going to uh, perform the examination and you're going to, you're going to be, be attention to if there's any amniotic fluid in the vagina, if there's any evidence of a pH greater than 40.5, which is that rupture of coronary membranes. And of course, I'm going to, you're going to see if the, there's any blood in the vagina. So life threatening, I mean, life threatening conditions such as amniotic fluid embolism or disseminated intravascular coagulation must be uh, treated right away, especially by uterine evacuation and pharmacological treatments such as replaced platelets, fibrogen, etc. Another important thing is that RH negative patients should be considered for RH immunoglobulin therapy according to the protocol of the hospital and the country, unless the injury is remote from the uterus. If the injury is remote from the uterus and that it is not a severe trauma, you, it is not mandatory to consider RH immunoglobulin therapy. Another discussed condition is that perimodern cesarean c-section. So perimodern cesarean section, occasionally baby successful is performed within four to five minutes after cardiac arrest of the mother. So this is, is this could be important to the pregnant and to the fetus, especially if the pregnancy is older than 24 weeks because before that the fetus is usually not compatible to the life. So neonatal death is is important issue here. An important thing to, to take notice of is that especially if the mother has suffered from a hypovolemic shock, it is unlikely to it is more than likely to baby to survive in a perimortal cesarean section because all the physiological changes that I have talked about because once the mother have once the mother show any symptoms of hypovolemic shock the fetus is had already been suffering from hypovolemia a while ago so there is going to be a lot of neurological damage or even death. So uh, my reference were the 20th edition of Advanced Trauma Life Support. If you have any questions, please leave down below. Please subscribe to the channel.